Sunday as well. If you have your Bibles, let's go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It simply says this, for we walk by faith and not by sight. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Then on to Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. I don't have time to read the whole chapter, but if you read Hebrews chapter 11, it's the faith chapter. It says, it goes on to say, By faith Abel, and by faith Enoch, and by faith Noah, and by faith uh, Abraham, and by faith Sarah, and by faith Isaac, and by faith Jacob, and by faith Joseph, and by faith Moses, and even it says, by faith the walls of Jericho, and it goes on to say even at the end, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 and 33, for time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, and Barak, and Samson, and, uh, and, and, and Je Jephthah, and David, and Samuel, and all of the prophets who watch this through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice. Come on, we need to enforce justice in our culture today. Obtained promises and, and stopped or shut the mouth of lions. We don't have time enough to tell of all the great things great men and women of God did. Why and how they did it through faith. Through faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for the gift of faith. God, we thank you, Lord, for uh, just the the opportunity to walk through trials and to walk through difficult circumstances and uh, unforeseen seasons, God. But we know, according to the Bible, that if we don't quit, that perseverance will finish its work and it will build in us great faith. And so, Father, we thank you for that, God. We pray that you would take this word, divide it as you see fit, and place it into the lives of people where they're living. And may we walk out of this place changed, different, encouraged, empowered, filled with the Holy Spirit, to take on the rest of what you've given us in this life to accomplish through faith and by faith. It is in Jesus' name that I pray and everybody says amen, amen. He is excited. Is that Jacob? Is that Jacob? If you have your Bibles, I'm gonna, uh, if you're, you're taking notes, I'm going I'm to preach to you from this, from this subject. The power of faith. The power of faith. You can look at the crazy uh, things that are happening in this world and you can look at the crazy things that are trying to be pushed in this world, and if you allow it, uh, it'll drive you down. It, it'll, 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 it'll drive you to, to depression. It'll drive you to drinking. It'll, it'll take your joy. It'll, it'll steal your peace. It'll rob you of your outlook. Uh, it, it'll, 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 it'll take away all the promise that you, of, of tomorrow that you had in your spirit. If you allow what's happening in the world, come on, it'll, if, if you prescribe and subscribe to that type of channel, come on, it's got the potential to take your life down, to take your attitude down, to take your walk with God down, or you can choose to get a new forecast or what I call a faith cast over what's coming. Like goodness is coming, joy is coming, blessing is coming, power is coming, peace is coming, assurance is coming, Jesus is coming, grace is coming. Come on. I don't know about you, but I'm still confident today, not because of what's happening in the world, but what's going on in heaven. Come on, Jesus is still seated on his throne, and he's not worried. He's not going to dabble in politics. He's not going to pick a side. Jesus is in the middle today. He's still seated. He's still confident. He's not biting his nails. Come on, he's still king of kings. He's still lord of lords. And as long as he's still, still seated on the throne, come on, I'm going to keep worshiping him. I'm going to keep serving him, and I'm going to keep praising him. I know it makes no sense to the world for us to be here today. It makes no sense to the world that we're singing to a God we've never seen. It makes no sense to the world that we can walk through trials with a smile on our face. It makes no sense to the world why we give part of our money back to a God and to a, and to, and, and to a kingdom that we have never literally seen with our eyes. It makes no sense to the world unless you are a child of God born into faith. But when you're a faith person, it makes total sense. Because we know that our, our walk with God is not based on what we see, come on, but it's based on what we hear. For faith comes by hearing, and the Bible says hearing by the word of God. So what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you faith is important. 
Faith is extremely vital to our Christian faith walk. For without faith, the Bible says, we cannot please God. Doesn't say without worship you can't please God, without giving it you can't please God, without serving you can't please. No, no, the Bible says for without faith, it's impossible to please God. I got it wrote down like this. Faith is a lot, of like, uh, is a lot like clothes and shoes with, that we put on. It comes in all different shapes and sizes, but for, the, for, but for the love of God, do something with one of it. Like we need to put something on. Like we should not be naked in our faith. Like, like we, we should be clothed in righteousness. We should be clothed with the peace of God. Like, f- f- you know, with your faith, just grab some type of faith and wear it. Like, have faith for today. Have faith with your kids. Have faith for your, for your marriage. Have faith for tomorrow. Have faith for our nation. Have faith for the church. Well, whatever you do, grab some type of faith and apply something. Faith, I got wrote down, is the currency of heaven. If you go to Mexico, you buy things with a peso. If you go to China, you buy things with the yen. If you, in America, uh, we, we, we used to use the dollar, but now we use Apple Pay. But when it comes to heaven, come on, and receiving from God, come on, the transaction is faith. If you want to get God's attention, you better get faith. If you want to please God, you better get faith. Come on, faith is stepping from a safe place to an unknown place. In other words, faith requires you and me to trust and believe what we do not see. To have faith is believing in something. Come on, have you ever been there where you prayed for something and didn't see what you prayed for? You ever prayed for your husband to change and been coming to church and been bringing, you know, and nothing ever changes? But you still got faith. Believing that the things that we don't see will, will eventually become the things that we do see. Having faith is simply saying, I'm still confident in this. I'm still going to trust you, God. I'm still going to praise you, God. I'm still going to worship you with my whole heart, God. I'm still going to honor you. I'm not sure how you're going to do it this time. I'm not sure how you're going to make a way this time. I'm not sure how you're going to meet my need this time. I'm not sure how you're going to come through this time, but I've got enough faith in my spirit. I've been read up on the word, and I've been worshiping on my own time, and I've been seeking your face every day, and my faith tank tank is full, and I don't have to see it for me to stand on this thing called faith in believe for the things that I do not see to become the things that I do see. It's this thing called faith. It's that type of faith. You want to attract the power and presence of God in your life? Get faith. You want the tangible presence of God to be evident in your life? Get faith. In Luke chapter 7 verse 9, the Bible says that, that Jesus marveled at the faith of the centurion. He had such a radical faith that he said, Jesus, you don't even need to go see my servant, but I've got faith enough to believe that you would simply just speak the word that he would be healed. And Jesus stopped and said, I marvel at your faith. Nowhere else in the Bible will you research and study the life of Jesus and the words of Jesus that marveled him the way that faith marveled him. And the danger we're facing in our church today and in the world today is that we have lost the desire to have radical faith. That we've been lied and tricked in to say this is going to be the way that our mundane life will be for the rest of our life. You will always live short of the blessing of God. You will never have a financial blessing in your life. You will never live with the peace of God in your life. And if you allow the voice of the enemy, he will stop you short of living on the edge of faith, believing for the things you do not see. And if you want to marvel God, you've got to learn to be like the the centurion in Luke chapter 7, to just say, Jesus, speak the word and it shall be done and I'll live like you've already done it. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm laying down, but the Red Sea got dried up so that the children of Israel could cross. And the Bible says that God did not marvel. God did not marvel at the donkey who opened up his mouth and preached the prophet Balaam. And and God did not marvel when the whale swallowed up Jonah and kept him hidden for three days and spewed him out on the shore that day. And the Bible does not say that God marveled when the whale swallowed Jonah. The Bible says that God did not marvel when an axe head was floating. And the, the Bible says that God did not marvel when the bush was burning in the middle of the desert saying, take off your shoes, you're on 
holy ground. 26,000 tons of manna fell every day at the tent doors of the children of Israel. And the Bible did not say that God marveled at that miracle. God, the Bible says God did not marvel when water came out of the rock to quench the thirst of the children of Israel. The Bible says that God did not marvel when dead men were raised. But the Bible does say that when Jesus saw great faith, he marveled. Oh, I wish you could pick up what I'm trying to preach today. If we could just get a little bit of faith in our heart. Come on. I'm not talking about great faith. I'm not talking about big faith. I'm talking about the power of having faith. Jesus said, if you have a faith as big as a mustard seed, you could say, speak to this mountain. I say it to be removed and it would be separated from the east. He doesn't say, Dakota, we need big giant faith. We don't need mountain-sized faith. We need faith as small as a... Why would Jesus say it? Because he knows we're not big enough in our thinking to think for big things, but can we believe for small things? And Jesus has a way that if we just believe for the small thing and all of a sudden our need is met, all of a sudden, well, guess what happens to our faith? It grows. We, believe, we, just, we, we, we go to believe for a little bit bigger thing and a little bit bigger thing and a little bit bigger thing. And before you know it, every day of your life, you're stepping out and believing by faith that the things that you didn't think were possible, come on, all things are made possible. So when we have great faith, I just, I, I just don't believe God's called his children to live in trial after trial after trial after trial. He didn't, he's, he's not called the children of, of, he hasn't called you and I to live from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. He hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't created us as a king's kid to live from pill to pill to pill to pill, from, from, from hard time to hard time to hard time to hard time. But if we have enough faith to believe that he who the sun sets free is, is free indeed, like, if we do have enough faith to believe that what God started, he's man enough to finish. Come on, we got to get our faith exercised. we got to get our faith increased. That this is what I believe, that I will see God do it. This is the things I go around saying, I will see my whole family saved. I, I will see this whole city changed. I will see the great coming of Jesus Christ. I, I will see a great move of God. I will see God heal your family. I will see God set him free. I will see God heal your marriage. I will see God restore that family. Come on, it's the power of faith. And some of you are waiting for things to make sense to have faith. Let me help you. Faith never makes sense. If you're waiting for everything to add up, it never adds up. Because if it made sense, it wouldn't be faith. If it added up and equal, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't call, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't need faith. If Peter was, was called out of the boat on the, on the seashore, he wouldn't need faith. But when Jesus called him out of the boat onto the, on, onto the, onto the strong waves, come on, how many people know you're going to need a little bit of faith? Like if Jesus is calling you out, it's going, it would take faith for me to step off of this platform. That's not faith, that's stupid. How many people know I'm going to fall to the ground? What are you trying to say? Don't, don't make stupid steps and claim faith. Like, don't go to the, don't go to the, the bridge today. I'm going, to, I'm going to have faith to mount up on wings like eagles and fly from the bridge to the island. No, you're going to fall to your death. So don't be a stupid Christian and do think stupid things and claim faith. No, that's stupid. But I can believe for things that I do not see. I can believe in my pastor friend who has cancer in his brain and cancer in his lungs. I wake up every day praying for Pastor Rob and Pastor Bob that, that man, he's going to be saved. He's going to be healed. He's going to be set free. Well, how can you say it? His, his body's cancer ridden because I got faith. I went to see him five or six times in a hospital and he was a blessing to me. I wasn't a blessing to him. And every time I leave, I pray for him, anoint him with oil in his hospital, and I, I, I never stop praying until I get home. I pray, and if God, if anybody deserves to be healed, it's that man. Yeah. I'm talking about exercising your faith for your loved ones. I know they're living like hell today, but you've got to have faith. Mom and dad, just keep bringing your kids to youth. I know you ain't seeing the fruit today, 
But you've got to have faith to believe that the seeds are being planted will in turn reap a harvest in the coming days. Like you may not even see the fruit from your kids being checked in the kids' ministry, but if you have a child, they should not be in this room. I don't got nothing for them, but they do. I love kids, but I, I'm, and maybe, maybe that's where I should be because a lot of kids like to hear me preach. Maybe that means I got to elevate my game a little bit. But I will tell you that what we need as a church family, what we need in your life, we need to have radical faith. Faith to believe for bigger. Like I wake up every day thanking, thanking God for this building, but it ain't my forever home. Like if this is what we do for the rest of my life, fine, but I just believe that God's got something better for us. But unless we have a church that stretches our faith and gives with a lot of faith and supports with a lot of faith, come on, we're going to need some people to sow a seed and for people to start fasting, for people to start praying, and for people to start believing. We need radical faith. Come on, all things are possible if we get God involved in our situation. And so what I was trying to say is faith rarely makes sense. A lot of times in my life, here's what faith looks like, moving on a maybe. Did God say it? I don't know, but I think he did, maybe. Did God say he's going to do that? I, I, I felt like he said that. I'm, I'm moving on a maybe. I'd rather step out on a maybe and be wrong than I would to stay in the boat and sink. I'd rather step out and say, God, I felt like you said this about my future. You said this about about my marriage, you said this about my family, you said this about my children, you, you said this about my, 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 my you, you said this about my, I'd rather, I'd rather step out on a maybe. And yet you might be wrong, and you may miss it, but you might get it right. And you may get faith. Come on, faith, it, it rarely makes sense. Sure, you might fall but you might run. You might fail, but you might win. You might look crazy. You might look like a genius. All you got to do is have enough faith to step out on something that you don't see. You gotta, you gotta, sometimes you got to go to war on a maybe. Sometimes you gotta, you, you got you gotta go on a, I, I may have heard from God, it may have been the Mexican last night, but I felt like I heard something and felt something, and I'm gonna move on a maybe. Yes. Most of the decisions I make, I like to say that I heard from God, but I, most of the time, I may have heard from God. Yes. And most decisions turn out, if it's done in the right spirit and it's done for the right purpose, oh God, even if he didn't ordain it, he has a way of using it. Because yes. I had enough faith to say, I think I heard from God. Come on, it's the power of faith. And here, here's the thing that we're facing, is a lot of us want more faith without the willingness to stretch our capacity or mind to believe for more. And so the danger is we settle into mundane, safe living where we never take a chance, where we never take a risk, where we never ask for more, where we never believe for more, where, we, where we're satisfied sitting on the lawn chair on the shoreline, just looking at the great things of other people as they're doing, God's doing great things in their life and saying, nah, I'm just glad to be on the journey with them. And that's great and maybe you'll make it to heaven, but I don't want to be found on the seashore sitting in a lawn chair watching life pass me by. I don't, want to, I don't want to get tricked into mundane, safe living when I can step out in the ground that I cannot see and there's a place called trust in God that, man, I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to trust you with my all. And I know, God, if I just put everything in you and I lean not on my own understanding, but, God, I put my trust in you and acknowledge your ways, God. I know you're going to direct my paths and you're going to make my way straight. Come on, it's this thing called the power of faith. Want to, want, want, want to kind of let you know that faith isn't found seated on the shoreline. It's found in the middle of the deep water, causing you not to take your eyes off God, because if you do, you're going to sink. And faith is easy. A lot of people say, I have faith. Until you go through something, you realize you don't have faith. A lot of our faith is superficial faith. We put on the front on church that we have faith. We dress like we have faith. We even, we even put on the front and worship like we have faith. 
But the only way you know you have faith is when you go through a trial, you go through a hard time, and then where does your cry go to? Because you want to bring faith out, go through something that you can't control. Because everybody thought we had faith until 2020 happened and nobody had faith. We closed our doors, ran, hid, put a mask on, put seven masks on, trying to just... How stupid were we? Stupid, really stupid. Some people still are driving in the car by themselves with a mask on, stupid. Can you edit that out, please? You've seen these people, though, by themselves in a car. I'm like, have you been living in a time zone? It's 20 freaking 23. I, 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 I hunt them down. I chase them down. I'm like, are you scared of yourself? I, I got to stop. Where was I at? Oh, yeah. Everybody thought they had faith until 2020. And then when we needed faith, we didn't have faith. And so the danger is sometimes we think we have faith, but when you go through a hard time, you go through a struggle, man, what comes out of you reveals what you've been putting in you. And what I've learned in pastoring this church and trying to lead through a pandemic and rebuild our church out of nothing when we came out of that thing, like what I've learned is we all need more faith. I don't care how long you've been saved, how many times you read the Bible, how many hymns you know, how many Sunday school classes you've led, how many times you've been saved. You need more faith. We need a faith. Come on, hear me. We need a faith. I, I want a faith. You may not need it, want it, but I, I want a faith that marvels God. Like, I want to have such radical faith that Jesus is like, my God, I marvel at his faith. I want to have such radical faith that I don't, I don't need to see certain things happen for me to stand up and believe that he is working all things, even things I do not see. His hand is at work putting together the things that he has planned and mapped out for my life. Come on, faith is a choice that you and I have. Faith may not, faith may not have got you in trouble, but the presence of faith is what's going to bring you out of the trouble. Faith is seeing the invisible, believing for the impossible, and then living like it's already done. I don't know how many times we pray, believing in faith for healing, and then say, hey, let me know what the doctor says when you go there Monday. Did our prayers not just mean nothing? Like, we either got faith or we don't. Because if we have radical faith, audacious faith, We would pray for the sick and pray to be healed and then tell the person we prayed for to cancel the doctor's appointment. You don't need to go. That's either stupid or that's faith. And you have to pick and choose what that is. But I'm saying there's a place we can get to in our faith walk with God that we believe for crazy things. That we believe for, I, I don't pray for something that I can do. I always want to pray and believe for something that I cannot do if God doesn't show up and do it. Because if I'm praying for God to do something that I'm able to do, why would I need God to come down from heaven to earth to do what he's already entrusted me to do? And some of us, that's where we live our life. We're asking God for faith for something to happen. He's already given you the power to perfect it. Like the Bible says he's given us the gift of faith. That's one of the gifts that we got. We got the gift of faith. A lot of you are praying for a better marriage, wanting God to intervene in your marriage. No, he's already given you every resource known to man to have a better marriage. And it starts in the house of God. If you break away from the house of God, your marriage will end up breaking up. That's just what happens. There is a blessing of God. There's the favor of God. There's, there's, there's something that takes place when you are planted firmly in the house of God. Not saying your marriage is always awesome when you're in church, but, but if you're in church together. Come on, there's something that happens. I've seen more families be torn apart, not when they're in church, but when they leave the church. I've seen good families on fire for God, raising their kids in church. They leave the church. They fall away from the church. Their daughter ends up marrying a woman. They're, they get a divorce. The other daughter runs far from God. And they're scattered everywhere. Why? Because they chose to leave the house of God. 
See, are you, are you asking, am I one of these faith preachers? Yeah, I'm a faith preacher. Is there another type? Do you want me to be, well, yeah, you got cancer, you're going to die. I'm not going to believe for healing. How, how would you like to f- follow a pastor that has no faith? It's the one thing the Bible says that we have to have to please God. Is there anything else to preach than faith? Is there any other message to preach than the message of faith? Like what we need as a family is more faith. Faith to believe that God's doing things. Faith to believe that God is able. Faith to believe that even though it doesn't look good, God, God can still turn it. I know my family's not right, but God can still turn it. I know my marriage ain't right, but God can still turn it. Sunday's rolling around again, and the worship team is starting to sing again, and the preacher is starting to preach again. And if I can just encourage you today, don't let a Sunday pass you by that you don't exercise a little bit of faith. And sometimes that's why you've got to close your eyes during worship. Because you've got to stop looking at your circumstances. And start looking at and stop looking at the storms all around you and close your eyes and get into a moment of worship and extend your hands, not because you're Pentecostal, not because you're charismatic, but I'm getting into a place where I'm surrendering to God and I'm not looking at my problems, but I'm closing my eyes and picturing God going to work in my situation. Because I need more faith. Come on, when you have faith, you don't let seasons dictate your future. But when, you're a, when, when, you, when you are full of faith, you walk around saying, I'm blessed in the bowl and I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed coming. I'm blessed going. Everything I put my hand to, I will, I will bless. Like, I'm not going to let this season of lack dictate my life. I'm going to speak pros- I'm going to speak blessing. Come on, he that began the good work in me will be faithful to complete it to the coming day of Christ. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him. Come on, I'll I'll remind myself that he'll never leave me or forsake me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me and chase me down all the days of my life. I'm blood-bought, I'm forgiven, I'm saved. I'm the righteousness of Christ. I'm I'm an heir, a joint heir with Christ. Come on, what are you doing? I'm speaking faith. I'm closing my eyes and blocking out the noise of our culture and focusing into the voice of the king and saying, yeah, God, I receive your word. And I, God, I know, I know all hell's breaking loose, and I know it don't make sense, God, but I'm going to trust in you. I know my kids are acting crazy, but I'm going to trust in you that I raised them the right way. God, I, 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 I know it don't make sense, but I'm going to worship you anyway. Come on, what do you do? I'm choosing to put my faith in God. Like, what do you do when you're walking through a hard time? Walking through uncertain moments, where do you turn to? Where do you go? Like, I know this is churchy, but, but I choose to put my faith in Christ. And I know that sounds super churchy and super cheesy and super religious, but I've had everything the world offers, and it's left me hungry and thirsting for more. I've lived on both sides of the fence. I've bought into the world's way. I've done life the world's way. And no matter how successful I was, I was still empty and void on the inside. No matter how much I got, I realized I didn't have anything. So yeah, I'm a faith preacher. And yeah, I believe I've got to put my hope in God. And I think if you want to see God do great things in your life, you too need to put your whole trust in God. Not some, I'm not talking about some mystical figure. Not some genie. He's not some little guy you can crawl up on his lap and tell him what you need and he answers you. Not putting my faith in the media. Not putting my faith in the news. Not putting my faith in the government. I'm choosing today to put my faith in God alone. Because he's not just a way. Come on, he is the only way. He doesn't just meet a need. He exceeds our needs. Come on, he doesn't say that you and I won't go through hard times. He doesn't say we won't be pressed. But he does promise us that we won't be crushed. So in other words, the battle's not going to break you. But it will absolutely stretch you. Faith. Faith. It's believing. It's believing for blessing while living in, 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 in lack. 
It's believing for healing when you get a bad, bad doctor's report. Faith is being able to raise a hands to a holy God even though everything inside of your, uh, your, your mind and your heart is telling you that, that, that you should not worship God because of the things that you're going through. No, because of the things you're going through, you should worship God. Because of the season you're walking through, no, 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 you're not gonna let, you're not gonna let the season dictate the faith. But if you're smart, you'll let your faith dictate your season. What you need is the power of great faith. Come on, right now, my God, get faith. Faith is like a muscle. If you work it, it gets stronger. But a lot of you are, are start out with just with five pound dumbbells like my wife and never wants to get more than a five pound dumbbell. You ain't getting stronger lifting the same five pounds for the last two years. Like you got, you got to pick up something that strains you, that tears you, and that hurts and makes you want to say bad words while you're doing the workout. But you know that what you don't see but the pain that you feel is making my arm or my body stronger. And a lot of us in the spiritual realm are still living like you're newly saved but yet been in the faith for 35 years. But you're still coming to church Let me spoon feed the word of God to you and claiming you got faith. No, 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 no. The only way you get stronger, Christian person, is to lift up weights that you can't carry and are stressful and are painful and that hurt you. But you know if you keep working it, come on, you're going to get stronger. See, a lot of people want Christian faith without being tired, without being sore, without being painful. Listen, if you're doing the, the, the Christian faith thing wrong, uh, right, you're going to be hurt. It's going to be painful. Why, why, why is it going to hurt? Because you're going you're, you're, you're gonna, to you're gonna love people that curse you, but you're going to believe so much in faith that you're going to believe for them and be there for them and buy them meals and take them to your house and love on them and be there for their kids in faith believing that they're going to be with you the whole time. No, no, no painful and it hurts but man having faith is worth it because God has a way of taking that pain and that hurt and he somehow he does this per the, the Bible says perseverance will finish its work quitting when you feel pain doesn't let perseverance finish its work come on but we, when you let faith build us up faith to stand faith for strength faith for healing Faith, come on, if you, if you, want, you want faith, like you got, sometimes you just got to close your eyes, get a promise, and live like it's done. Faith for your family, close your eyes, get a picture, get a promise, and then li live life like it's done. Faith for your marriage, close your eyes, get a picture, get a promise, live like it's done. Faith for, you know, faith for prosperity. Get a job. You don't need to close your eyes about that. Get a job. Work. Give back to God. You, 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 you want to be blessed richly financially? Start giving back to the house of God. The full 10%. If you make a thousand, give a hundred. You, you don't need to pray about it. You're one of them faith. Yeah, I'm a faith preacher. I've seen God work in my life. I know a guy that goes through our church that, that ties down to the penny. And about six weeks ago, he had a $100,000 debt paid off. He didn't even know how or why it was coming. So don't you dare tell me. Come on, you can clap if you want or you can, if you're, come on, you gotta be willing to clap for somebody else's blessing. Clap for somebody else's breakthrough. I'm just saying, I'm not, Listen to me, I'm not saying you can pay your way into a blessing, but I am telling you that God has a way behind the scenes that he marvels at the faith and I'm gonna do something impossible. And I said, just because they paid that debt off, now you can help me build the church, why don't you just go ahead and keep making that payment? Because make happen for somebody else what God makes happen for you. Come on, get faith. Get a picture. Not only get a picture, but then sometimes you've got to change your life and change your schedule, change your priorities to get you where the picture has been presented to you. Are you following me? I'm out of time. But let me close with this. 
God has the resources to make it possible for your life. Faith, faith for healing, faith for open doors, faith for, for, for family restoration, faith for, for clear minds, faith. God, God, you have to have faith for whatever the need is. God has the resources to make what you need possible. The Bible says he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is his footstool. The earth is in the fullness. It all belongs to God. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say God is able. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 3.20 says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. So he's able to do not only what you ask, but what you ask and then, and then some. Exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask think or imagine come on our God can make it happen so in other words he's able to fix your broken marriage he's able to heal your your you, he's able to heal your body in spite of the diagnosis he's able to bring resource into your lap he's able he's able to put your family back together he's able to save your your son he's able to save your daughter he's able to give you a, a, a fresh start he can fix the unfixable. He can save the unsavable. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Guess what that is? That's extra. He could have said he's able to do a lot, but the Bible is very descriptive and every word there is put on purpose. And so when he puts exceedingly, I did some research this week and exceedingly means over, above, and beyond abundantly to go beyond which means it's beyond beyond come on wrap your mind around that exceedingly over and above beyond and then abundantly is to go beyond beyond how awesome and amazing is the God that we serve that he's not satisfied with just meeting our need but he wants to exceed our need come on how powerful of a God do we serve that he doesn't just want to heal you. Come on, he doesn't want to just break the curse off of your life, but he wants to set you free that not only changes your life, but changes the generations coming after you. That's exceedingly abundantly. Everything in our life falls in three categories, a time, a place, or cause. Beyond, beyond, any time, place, or cause. He's beyond that. It's excessive. God, God wants to give us bloated blessings. So much that we have so much, not, not just, the Bible says, not, not just filled, but running over. Poured out, running over, will he cause people to give unto your bosom. Not so that we can keep it, but so that we can distribute it. If you're giving to get, you're giving with the wrong, wrong motive. God wants to create a river in his people. And I'm not only talking about money, I'm talking about everything in our life being faith. If he's given you healing, don't let the healing stop with you. He wants to get it through you. Salvation comes to you, but it also wants to come through you. Generational blessing, not just to you, also through you. Let's not be a people that doubt. Let's not be a people that pray weak prayers. Let's not be a people that, that settle for medio you, you know, just mediocrity, mundane, boring living. Come on, let's be a church with radical faith. I'm not talking big faith. Radical faith. Faith as small as a mustard seed. Come on, today get faith. Faith, what is faith? Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things I do not see. What is, what is your faith? It's evidence. How can I believe for healing? Because I've got evidence of him doing it before. How can I believe for salvation? I've got evidence that he saved somebody before. How can I believe for financial breakthrough? I've got evidence that he's done it before. How, how, how can I believe for people being set free from addiction? I've got evidence of seeing people that he's done it before. Come on, what is faith? It's the substance. It's something that we do not see, but it's the evidence. Come on, it's the evidence of things that we have seen. Come on, Christian church. 
We've seen too many miracles not to have faith. Come on, today get faith.